today. I'm Chad London, Provost and Vice President Academic at Mount Royal University, and it's my pleasure to be the MC of today's event. As we start, I would like to acknowledge that we are gathering on Treaty 7 territory. I honour and respect the land and the cultures of the Siksika, Pakani, Kainai nations of the Nitsitsipi Blackfoot Confederacy, the Dene of Sutina Nation, and the Chiniki, Bearspaw, and Wesley Nations of the Yahe Nakoda. I also acknowledge this land is home to Métis Region 3. Welcome to Mount Royal University, located in Mokinsis, which is the Blackfoot name for the city of Calgary. I'd like to start by recognizing our guests today. We have Demetrius Nicolaides, Minister of Advanced Education, Jason Copping, Minister of Health, Zaldi Patron, Consul General of the Philippines in Calgary, Robin Stewart, an instructor in the School of Nursing and Midwifery here at Mount Royal, and Uche Nechi, a student in the Mount Royal University Bridge to Canadian Nursing Program. Also want to acknowledge Jennifer Ma, Dean of Health Studies at Northwest College, and uh, Lynn Connell, Vice President of Bow Valley College. Thank you for joining us. In terms of the order of events, we'll first hear a few words from the Government of Alberta, the Consul General, and members of Mount Royal's Bridge to Canadian Nursing Program. There will be an opportunity for media to ask questions at the end. Uh, and to begin, I'll turn the mic over to the Minister of Advanced Education, Demetrius Nicolaitis, to say a few words. Minister Nicolaitis. Well, Chad, thank you so much, and um, good afternoon, everyone. A long time no see. I think we were here about a week ago um, regarding a, a, an exciting announcement at that time for a new, uh, in the development of a new bursary for, for nursing students in particular, and i um, happy to continue to build off that a little bit more today. I want to thank the guests as well that uh, Chad mentioned, and uh, so happy to, to have them all here. Um, and as well, really excited uh, and, and want to thank Uche for being here to speak. Uh, a recent student, I, I learned, has just graduated. I think it was uh, or completed her program, I think it was about a month or two ago. And uh, now uh, working uh, at a very busy Peter Lougheed hospital, hospital and providing her uh, services and her skill uh, at the level that uh, they're supposed to be at. And really excited to hear a little bit more from her later on. Uh, and indeed, I'm sure there are a few people in this room here today who remember when we were here in October of last year to announce uh, some exciting new initiatives uh, in the space of internationally educated nurses. In particular, we announced some initial funding to expand nurse bridging programs, and we also announced the intent to create a new bursary for internationally educated nurses. Um, as well, right in this very room at that time, we signed a new MOU with uh, the government of the Philippines to help bring more Filipino nurses to Alberta. And at that time, we heard from Hannah, uh, a, cl a classmate I learned of Uche's, um, a student at the uh, Bridge to Canadian Nursing Program, of course, right here at Mount Royal University. Hannah came to Canada from Lebanon, which I think is, was about eight years ago now. And she came seeking a better life and uh, also dreaming to work in one of the world's leading healthcare systems, uh, visions and aspirations that uh, probably are quite similar to those of, of Uche's, which I know she'll share with us in a few moments. But uh, because of the licensing process that Hannah and others uh, had to uh, experience through, she had been out of practice for seven long years. Hannah applied to MRU's bridging program in 2017, but was not able to be admitted into the program until 2022. If she did not have to wait five years, we could have already had one more nurse in Alberta's health workforce. Hannah's experience is not unique. Many internationally educated nurses face long wait lists and significant financial barriers to gain accreditation in Alberta. As we are all aware, there is a growing need for healthcare professionals to help address current and future demand in our healthcare system. Alberta needs more nurses. Albertans 
need more nurses. And there are hundreds of internationally educated nurses who want to come live and work in Alberta, but they are facing issues just like Hannah did and just like Uche did. And that is why I'm excited to be here today with my colleague, Minister Copping, to share how Alberta's government is making it easier for internationally educated nurses to study, live, and work in our remarkable province. We are building upon last fall's announcement with two key investments. But in total, and this is a, a prelude to the upcoming budget uh, 2023, we will be investing $15 million to help support internationally educated nurses. And this is broken down into two key buckets. First and foremost, $7.8 million annually will be available to fund a new bursary for internationally educated nurses to access up to $30,000. We are also investing another $7.3 million over three years to create 600 new seats for nurse bridging programs at Bow Valley College, Norquest College, and of course, right here at Mount Royal University. Alberta has the best frontline healthcare workers in the world. And we are working to have the right supports in place to ensure Albertans can get the care they need when and where they need it. With that, I'll share with you a few more details about the expanded seats. With this new investment, Mount Royal University will add 256 new seats to its registered nurse bridging program. Bow Valley College will add 120 new seats, and Norquest College will add 250 new seats to their respective bridging programs. These new seats will start to become available in the 23-24 academic year. And I just want to emphasize how important this investment is. These bridging seats have incredibly high demand, with many applicants waiting years to be admitted due to limited capacity. But wait times, of course, are not the only barrier that many internationally educated nurses face. There are significant financial barriers that can make accreditation in Alberta inaccessible. With the new bursary, we hope to eliminate that barrier and ensure internationally educated nurses can access the support they need to study, live, and work in our province. Eligible internationally educated nurses will be able to access as much as $30,000 over five years to help offset the cost of nurse bridging programs, tuition, and other living expenses. Funding from this bursary will be made available in the upcoming 23-24 academic year. The bursary will also have a return of service agreement where recipients are required to complete a year of nursing service in Alberta for every $6,000 distributed. This will enable these nurses to work in our province, particularly in areas that are seeing nursing shortages, helping keep our healthcare system strong, both now and well into the future. In fact, any internationally educated uh, nurse living in Alberta who has successfully enrolled in an approved bridging program will be eligible for the bursary, regardless of their eligibility for other federal or provincial student supports. The amount of the eligible bursary will be determined based on the individual's program of study, tuition costs, licensing, and other program fees. Today's investment as well helps to fulfill important pieces of the memorandum of understanding between Alberta and the government of the Philippines. Specifically, they address items listed under areas of cooperation between our two governments to work with post-secondary institutions to increase seats and to develop financial assistance for internationally educated nurses. I want to take a quick moment to thank Consul General Zaldi Patron for his strong advocacy and dedication that led to this important and historic agreement. I'm proud and honored to continue building this strong relationship between Alberta and the Philippines. I look forward to our continued work to support our healthcare system and create new opportunities for Filipino Albertans to find meaningful work in their new province. So in closing, we're, we are working hard to reduce barriers for internationally educated nurses to come to Alberta and ensure our healthcare system remains strong now and into the future. 
This announcement is another piece of our government's larger strategy to improve our health care system, which includes historic investments in health care and expanding health care programs at our post-secondary institutions. I want to offer my thanks and appreciation to Mount Royal University, Bow Valley College, and Norquest College for their vision and support in expanding their programs for internationally educated nurses. As well, again, thank you to Consul General Zaldi Patron for all the work that you've done. Together, we are working to ensure Albertans have a strong health care system when they need it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister Nicolaitis. I would now like to invite Jason Copping, the Minister of Health, to the podium. Thank you, Dr. London, uh, and uh, special thanks to uh, Mount Royal University for inviting us back here today. Uh, once again, it's uh, great to be part of this announcement and a follow-up uh, what we did as uh, last October, as indicated by uh, uh, Minister Nicolaitis, and, and great to see uh, the folks from Bull Valley College and Norquest, uh, because we need all the players here to be able to expand our health human resources. And, uh, and Council General Patron, a pleasure to see you again, and, and, and the ongoing work between our governments, because really, you know, what this is about, as, as Minister Nicolaitis uh, stated, it's about ensuring that we have the uh, human resources we need to deliver uh, the health services to Albertans uh, where and, and when they need it. And, and, and as Minister Nicolaitis just mentioned, this new bursary and the additional spaces for bridging programs will help those internationally trained nurses who want to work and live in Alberta achieve their personal and professional goals. By removing substantial barriers for these nurses, they will be able to bring their training and experience to communities across our province. Now, the costs associated with these programs can reach tens of thousands of dollars and take years to get into a bridging program to attain necessary license to practice here in Alberta. The financial hurdles many face when looking to align their training with Alberta standards can also add to the stress and anxiety created coming to a new province and a new country to work. It can make others think twice about moving here. And that is why this bursary will cover up to $30,000 of the cost associated with the bridging programs for internationally trained nurses. We need their skills urgently, and we are committed to investing in these programs to remove the barriers that they face. Getting a spot in and completing bridging programs are, can often be a slow and frustrating process that, until now, has prevented many of these internationally trained nurses from pursuing their careers and doing the job that they're eager to do, and quite frankly, have come to Canada to do. And all the time it takes to accredit these nurses means we are waiting longer for more health care workers. Of course, all of us here today know that Alberta needs all the nurses that we can get. And we are working hard to address the urgent staffing requirements in all parts of Alberta's health care system. And nurses are an integral part of that system. Their dedication and care throughout these challenging times of need that we've seen in the province is nothing short of remarkable. Internationally trained nurses are wanted and they are needed here. And under the Health Care Action Plan, we are committed to creating a health care system that attracts health care professionals to Alberta. What we announced here today supports that work. With this bursary and the increase in spaces and bridging programs, these nurses have an easier path to start their careers as nurses here. Not only will this add to the skilled health care workforce we already have here in the province, but it will also continue to ensure our health care system is fully functioning and it's there for Albertans when and where they need it. So once again, thank you, Minister Nicolaitis and, and all of the participants, uh, the, the universities in this, and best of luck uh, to the nurses who will be able to make use of this bursary and these increased spaces. Uh, we're looking forward to having you join the world-class healthcare system that we have in Alberta, and this is a key part of our health human resource strategy to ensure that we Albertans get the health care when and where they need it. And with that, I'll turn it back to our MC, Dr. London, to uh, 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 introduce our next guest today. Dr. London. Thank you, Minister Copping. I would now like to invite Consul General Patron to say a few words. Good afternoon. It's nice to be back here in the MRU. 
on behalf of the government of the Philippines, I warmly welcome this announcement of the Alberta government led by Advanced Education Minister Timetrios Nicolaides and Health Minister Jason Copping for an enhanced support for the internationally educated nurses in the province, many of whom come from the Philippines. With an increased budget for the bursary program and the expansion of the number of seats for the nursing bridging programs for registered nurses and licensed practical nurses, the Filipino IEN in this province will now be more motivated to undergo the credentialing process to pursue a nursing career and provide to millions of Albertans that compassionate, caring, dedicated, professional, and high quality nursing care that Filipino nurses are so well known for all over the world. The Philippines is proud to have formally advocated with the Alberta government as early as 2021 and in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. The extension of financial assistance for the Filipino IEN who would like to take the assessment, testing, and nursing bridging program of this province. We are grateful that on October 6, 2022, the Alberta government signed with the Philippines the MOU on the Recruitment of Filipino Nurses, which includes a provision for a bursary program that is now extended to all IEN in the province. We strongly believe that this support is a step in the right direction as Alberta has to tap the many IEN who are already here in the province and are just waiting for better opportunities for them to start their nursing career. In the process, they will be able to provide the warm bodies and the frontline service that Alberta's healthcare system needs so much at this time. I thank Premier Daniel Smith and her government for their commitment to implement the provisions of the Philippines-Alberta MOU on the recruitment of Filipino nurses, which is a win-win arrangement for the Philippines and the province of Alberta. Thank you. Mabuhay. Thank you so much, Consul General. I would now like to invite one of our Mount Royal University Bridge to Canadian Nursing recent graduates, Uche Nechi, uh, to the podium. We were lucky enough to catch her on a day off from work at Peter Lloyd. Thank you for being here, Uche. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Uche Chuku Nechi, and I completed Mount Royal University Bridge to Canadian Nursing Program last month. My nursing journey began in Nigeria. I became interested in nursing as a young child. After seeing how the nurses took care of my grandmother during her final days in palliative care, I earned a degree in nursing science from Mount Madonna University, Nigeria, and practiced in a psychiatric unit, community and medical unit before coming to Canada to join my husband and my family. I received thorough training in the bridge to Canadian nursing program, from classroom learning to professional skill training, clinical practice, and health alterations and therapeutics. We are well prepared to become practicing healthcare professionals here in Canada. Access to financial support like the bursary announced today help alleviate some of the stress so that internationally educated nurses like me, can focus more on our education and less on paying our bills. Opportunities to assess financial support are so helpful. I know from experience that the career I have chosen can be as demanding as it is rewarding. Support like this could mean that we may not, work, we may not need to work so many hours at our part-time jobs or draw as much from student loan as we prepare to resume our careers. Now I am continuing my nursing career here in Alberta. My goal for the future is to further my career and specialize in psychiatric nursing. What I love about working in Alberta 
in the healthcare sector is that they create a, a supportive environment for all healthcare workers, including international educated nurses, and thereby bringing families together. Nurses are always needed. My classmates and I are here to answer that call. I hope that many of my fellow students in nursing bridging programs across the province will benefit from this new bursary as they embark on their futures. Thank you. Thank you, Uche. I would now like to invite one of our instructors, Robin Stewart, to say a few words. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you to the ministers, Consul General, and to Uche. This is very good news for Alberta, for our healthcare system, and for Mount Laurel University's School of Nursing and Midwifery. I am an associate professor and the program coordinator for Mount Royal's Bridge to Canadian Nursing program. And today's funding announcement is so important for the internationally educated nurses working towards obtaining license and registration to work as RNs in Alberta. As Uche said, nurses are always needed and professional nurses who immigrate to Canada but are not able to obtain or are stalled or delayed in obtaining a license are an untapped source of knowledge and skill. Internationally educated nurses have many strengths in both character and nursing practice and experience, including resiliency, determination, patience, a very strong work ethic, and cultural understanding. The Mount Royal Bridge to Canadian Nursing program began back in 2006, admitting 80 students every year. And in 2021, we expanded our program to accept 120 internationally educated nurses a year. Our students come from all over the world, including the Philippines, India, and other Asian countries, the UK, the US, and parts of the Caribbean. Our program focuses on professional communication in Canada, health alterations and therapeutics, health assessment, professional nursing skills, clinical reasoning and judgment, nursing theory, and of course, clinical practice in medical surgical environments. Coursework is additionally further focused on helping internationally educated nurses address practice and or knowledge and practice differences in specialty practice areas like mental health, child health, and family newborn health nursing. Our faculty and staff provide a supportive educational environment that builds confidence and competence as these nurses transition into the Canadian healthcare system. Many of our students do struggle to maintain a healthy and happy work-school-life balance. And the majority of our students work and care for families, leaving them little time for socialization or study. This new support will allow students to focus more time and energy on their studies and provide them with the opportunity to perhaps engage in more university activities. Nurses who have gone through our program, like Uche, are able to contribute in so many positive ways to our healthcare system. And we are very proud to make this possible for them here at MRU and make this possible for all Albertans. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. Well, on behalf of Mount Royal University, Bow Valley College and Northwest College, I want to express just how impressed we are by all of our students in our bridging programs for healthcare professionals. Your perspectives, your skills, your expertise is going to shape the future of nursing in Alberta. Thank you for bringing your world of knowledge to the workforce in Canada. Graduates of our nursing programs make invaluable contributions to our healthcare system and the community at large. And at no time in our history have these contributions been more important to sustaining a healthy, functioning society. Today's announcement is good news for Alberta. The new opportunity announced today will help bolster bench strength among our province's talented and hardworking nursing professionals. This concludes the formal portion of today's announcement. I want to thank all of our speakers for being here today and for their commitment to support internationally educated nurses in Alberta. Thank you.
we'll now begin the media Q&A portion of this announcement. We are running tight on time today, so we're going to be starting off with one question, one follow-up per outlet and see how we're doing for time there. Uh, I would now invite on-topic questions in the room to make your way up to the mic, and that's where we'll start. Hi there, uh, Bill Graveland from the Canadian Press. I was wondering if Uche could perhaps uh, answer a question. Yeah. Now, that's, unless I mispronounced it. <laughs> but if we could get you at the uh, podium. It's nothing tough. <laughs> <clears throat> well, first question, could you spell your name? U-C-H-E. And your last name? N-E-C-H-I. All right. Uh, I, I was wondering how long you had to wait before you could get into a bridging program. I had to wait about four to five years. <laughs> <laughs> four to five? Yeah. Or 45? Four. To four to five? five? Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, how frustrating was it to, to not be able to do your, uh, your career? Well, I think... Uh, um, it's not really frustrating, but because there are so many other things that we, we are doing at this time, we are waiting for the program. But at some point, you have to think about, okay, I really wanted this. But, I mean, it's all about balancing life and family and this, this school. Good. Thank you. I don't have a question, but I have a comment. Um, My name. We, we're just doing questions uh, right yeah. now. Um, if you want to leave a comment to the end, we can okay. do that afterwards. So, a um, uh, question for the honorable ministers of uh, education and health. Um, our membership are very happy, but the questions that they have right now is uh, from the process perspective. Who would, be the, who would be the organizations that are tasked to actually manage the different bursary that this program is giving? Sure, thank you, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, so the, the bursary will be, will be managed by the government of Alberta, will be managed by the Department of uh, the Ministry of Advanced Education. Um, as well, we are working, as I mentioned, you know, very closely with Mount Royal University, Norquest, and, and Bow Valley. And so we will be able to, to see students that are enrolling in the program and, and work with them to make the, the bursary and the supports available once, once they've already registered. So that's, they don't have to go look and apply for it anywhere. If they're, if they're um, registered for the program, they will be automatically considered. Uh, but I guess the, the one thing that's really important that we communicate is that if, if you are an internationally educated nurse and uh, you're not, um, not able to practice at your full skill level, that now is a, a great time to be able to consider uh, participating in a bridging program, going back to school. There are new sub financial supports available that will help you. So I, I think that that's perhaps the, the biggest takeaway that we can leave. And, Hope to encourage more people and more internationally educated nurses out there in our province to take advantage of one of these incredible bridging programs and the bursaries that are now available. And we'll go back to the mic in the room. Uh, Tyson Fedora with CTV. Uh, Demetrius, it's for you or either health minister copying. Uh, with these 600 new seats or a little more than 600, uh, when will we see that impact uh, maybe on the healthcare system? So when these these uh, nurses do come in and take the bridging program, how soon could we see them actually working in the healthcare system? Sure, well, and that's one of the, the benefits of the bridging programs. It's, uh, of course, they're tailored to individuals who already have some, some qualification. Um, it, you know, it depends on the duration. I think the average time, and, and I stand to be corrected, uh, is, is about a year uh, for a little bit, what's that, a little bit more? 10 to 14 months. Oh, it was a, 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 about a year was, was kind of ballpark. <laughs> Let's be a little bit more precise. So 10 to 14 months. So um, once that program uh, is complete and the person has made all the requirements, they're, they're ready to go. Yeah. Perfect. And now we'll go over to the phones operator. Could you put through the first caller, please? Catherine Gorgowski, Alberta Today. Uh, good afternoon. I'm wondering whether there's anything within this 
bursary program that offers incentive specific for attracting nursing students to rural Alberta. Yeah, thank you. Uh, there's there's no specific caveats around the bursary uh, tailored to um, to applicants in rural Alberta or to practicing in rural Alberta. Uh, but of course, it is an important consideration, and, and more broadly, we are looking to take measures to encourage more individuals to practice in rural Alberta. I'm not sure that maybe Minister Copping might want to uh, provide a supplementary about some of the more um, uh, detailed government-wide initiatives that are, are being taken uh, to, uh, to get more healthcare professionals into rural Alberta. But as it relates to the particular bursary, uh, we don't have any specific restrictions or, or uh, limitations in that regard. And did you have a follow-up, Catherine? Uh, yes, for Minister Copping. Um, the United Nurses of Alberta has sent a letter um, with some suggestions on recruitment and retention of nurses. Um, they say they've received a letter acknowledging the receipt, but that you haven't yet taken them up on their offer to engage on implementing some of these solutions. I'm wondering why you haven't done that yet and whether you plan to do that in the future. Yeah, so I did receive their, their letter. I'm thankful for some of their suggestions. We're looking at those suggestions and others as part of our um, our health human resource plan and, and uh, did have an initial conversation with uh, with UNA. Uh, we'll follow up with, a, with another conversation down the road uh, in that regard because, you know, we do know that we need more nurses. Um, it's all about... Uh, uh, retention uh, and attraction uh, and and this is the announcement that we have today is is just one part of uh, our broader approach in terms of uh, more supply you know we have some you know great internationally educated nurses already in the province they can't practice with their full scope so this programs like this will actually help in uh, improve supply for uh, for nurses and and then other programs you know for example you know una and uh, you know ahs uh, they have a you know as part of the agreement that they reach uh, funds put aside for, um, you know, attracting and, re and retaining uh, nurses in rural areas, uh, and we're going to continue to do work on, you know, things like this to increase supply generally, uh, but also other programs, so stay tuned. Thank you, and that looks like all of our questions for today, so that'll conclude the Q&A and this announcement. Thank you, everybody, for joining us.